It's a rare whiskey day in the vault. Rare whiskey Friday, for those that don't know, is basically us going through back-to-back -back whiskeys that don't have a tremendous amount of widespread or widespread distribution. Yep. So, uh, the chances of you getting your hands on this are going to be very much hit or miss, but it's still worth us diving in and giving a first impression. This is from Benjamin Ross, is officially. Yeah. I feel like, well, heckling titans. <laughs> 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 Okay, this is from Asante, and this is kind of fun. Remember we did the rye, Asante? I remember Asante, yes. And I remember he talked about this week, he was a punk rock. He was trying to make the punk rock a whiskey. Okay. And, um, and we liked the Asante. This is their bourbon. It's called Sunken Bobber Bourbon Whiskey. Mm -hmm. And it's signed and marked by Rick Schneider, okay. who actually makes the whiskey. Oh, right on. Yeah, when yeah. Benjamin Ross got it from me, he said, To the Whiskey Vault, can't wait for my next review, because evidently he saw the Asante one. Well, so here's the thing. Hopefully, Rick, hopefully we like it. Hold on, before you go on the nose. Yeah. I'm wary of your ability to even give this a fair shake. Because why? Because it has the musty barn. Oh, no. The dense hay. Oh, no. Get in there. I didn't find that on the rye. Get in there. Am I wrong? No, you're not Bam. wrong. Bam. Not your favorite note on the nose. No, there's this one note, Rick, that shows up in everything like this. Not and everything. Not, well, everything it, like in this, there's something happening. And if I could pinpoint the source, I would know what to avoid. But it's not as dominant so in this one as it is in some, it, but it's there. For it's me, definitely there. it's an old barn full of fresh hay. That's the way I always describe this note. But there's this density to and it. And for me, it's sap. There's a density to it, there's a sweetness to it that makes it interesting, but this is also reminding me of childhood romps and excursions through Silver Dollar City mm. in the Ozarks. Okay. You basically go up in, you know, the, the hills of the Ozarks and there's this... How is it different from Branson? There's a theme park there. Branson is like a neutered Vegas for old people. Yeah. Okay? This is much more of like rustic... Uh, like wood carving, but and a wood theme wood. park. Just think of um, hillbilly centric. Okay. Right, the log cabins, and everything's wood and everything. But hillbilly. then with rides. Oh, yeah, then with rides. For me, it's, it reminds me of being in East Texas piney woods and getting in pine cone wars yeah. with my friends. No, I'm saying which are brutal. These kind of piney, have you ever been in a pine cone war? Kind of piney woods is what you're walking through. It's yeah. dense, dense tree cover. Yeah. Right. That's what Silver Dollar City is all about. Yeah. Have you ever been in a pine cone war? Yeah. It's brutal, man. No. It hurts. Pycomb Wars, uh, Acorn Wars, if you're, you know. It's a little more mild. Yeah, they're funny it in there. But you get a slingshot in that. Oh, sh**. No. It's, it's, yeah. I'll take a man down. Um, and then there's these things in Oklahoma. They fall off of this certain kind of tree, and there's like this little, looks like a miniature sea urchin. Hmm. It's got spikes. When it falls off, it's green. It's still got moisture in there. It's dense. When it does. And then you can just nail someone and make them cry. It's the best. <laughs> the best. All right. At the nose of that green pine is subsiding a little. And it's turning into honey. Hmm. More brown sugar on the taste. Yeah. The brown sugar sort of recovers the taste for me. Brown sugar. A little and, bit. Brown sugar and tea. Like almost steeped too long tea. Yeah. A little bitter. Like you squeezed the tea bag yeah. out and got all the dregs of the tea in there. You just grabbed it and you squeeze it. Squeeze. It's like doing reviews with a child. Are my notes not on point? Accurate? Helpful? It's a little bit bitter. You're bitter. 12, uh, aged a minimum of 12 months. Now, they did different rounds. It's changing up on the taste every time I come back to it. There is like a floral perfume <coughs> dense note. Sweet, not not sugary, but it, the molasses brown sugar, that's the sweet element, but there's this, uh, the way, I think we did a similar note with the whiskey last week or the week before, the way that flowers smell, mm -hmm. turn that into- Real a, flowers. Yeah, turn that into an extract and put it on the taste, this floral, dense, perfuming But sweetness. green, too. Yeah. Like the stock. Okay, like a we're moving on sweetness, yeah. to Middle West Spirits, a gift mm -hmm. from, uh, how would you pronounce that, Jack and Harder? J A C H I N. Jockin. Jackin. 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 Hart. Mr. Hardy, you magnificent. <laughs> 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 We 
We've got another one from him today. Okay. So this is just the first one. This is Ohio. Now it's turning into like a buttery caramel. Yeah. Buttery caramel now. It's not jumping out of the glass, but it's definitely there. It's not intense or saturated. So this is founded by Brady, Kanye, and Ryan Lang in 2008. Mm -hmm. And in 2010, started doing full production. 47.5% alcohol. There's something in here that I'm trying to get. It's maybe banana. Maybe. Like a, like a banana's foster note? Like yeah, because like it's sweeter than a banana, right? But it's not banana and bread. It's like so a, it's not bready. A banana that has some type of caramel syrup with it. I see. I don't. There, there's this one. What's the um? What's the uh, uh, banana pudding? And it's got chunks of banana and vanilla wafers in mm -hmm. it. Yeah. I've always hated it because the texture of the mushy bananas. I like it. You get the wafers. But the thing is, I love the taste of banana pudding. Okay. Love. If somebody could get rid of the texture and get me banana pudding, I'd be all in. All right, pudding. The taste, the word that springs to mind is nicely balanced. It doesn't uh, go down like a 47.5% whiskey. It goes down a little bit lighter. Oh, whoa. But There's like a almost smoky spice, but not smoke. Like a barrel wood spice that, this is way more interesting than I thought it was gonna be. Oh, you know, you just sprang to mind. This is a weeded bourbon, four oh, grains. I'm gonna tell you what this is. Are you okay. Ready? Are you ready? This, and it's gonna sound like, uh, I'm not fond of it, that's not the case. The sweeter, creamier elements of Canadian whiskey mm -hmm. with this like a uh, charred barrel note. Yeah, the charred Under, barrel. Yeah, undercutting yeah. that sweetness to make it a really nice dichotomy of flavors. Damn. Are you not getting, see what I mean by Canadian caramel? No, no, I am, it's coconut. There's a coconut note in there that's almost syrupy. But it doesn't go full on Canada yeah, sweetness. Yeah, it's not flat or bland, it's just there. It, the thing that makes it interesting the is barrel this spice. charred barrel element. Man, that's good. Yeah, I like it. This is, um, yeah. yeah, this is great. Okay, we're moving on to uh, two bottles. I'm just gonna pour them at the same time, one in each glass, because this is a gift from a rep. Oh. This is from uh, Shelly Daly, who is the managing partner at this distillery. Okay. And she sent us these whiskeys. I don't know what that is. And what she said in her note was, oh, here you go. She gets it. She said, Daniel Rex, looking forward to our moment of awkward silence. <laughs> Let me know when you guys are able to get to this. So this so is um, Shelly so Daly. Shelly, it is, uh, she sent things. It's a wrap of she has uh, monetary incentive Studio to get the there. word out, but we don't. So that happened. All right, this is a rye and a bourbon. Yeah. It's a rye malt. So explain this. Right thing. now, well. I'm not entirely certain because the information was a little vague and I didn't reach out to Shelly to get more because I didn't want it to feel like we were getting Shelly's promotional notes. Right. That's the bourbon. Here, let's pour the bourbon in one glass. Okay. Let's start with that one and then we'll go okay. to the rye. Okay. A malted rye could either mean that it's a mix of rye and malt or it could mean that they malted the rye, which is totally possible. Okay. And would make it pretty rare. All right. Are we starting with this? Yeah. On the nose, you said this is a bourbon. Mm -hmm. This is unique because the nose for me is a really dry walnut almond nose. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it almost heads to that too young pine, but it stops no. before it gets there yeah. and switches into these really sweet notes. I'm getting walnut. Almond dryness on this. Yeah, and waxy dryness. What sweet elements are you finding? This is why we have you know to what it is? two glasses. Two I know. Glasses. It's um it's uh pine nuts. Okay. The smell of opening a bag of pine nuts. But there's a sweetness that's not honey, it's not molasses, okay. it's not quite even brown sugar. I don't know what that sweetness is. It doesn't feel foreign to whiskey. I just don't have it feels like a cooking in a sauce. Like something that normally gets cooked into a sauce. Okay. What is it? I don't know. It's freaking me out. It's got to be a lower... 46. It's reasonable. Is It is very dry. Like, I find Ooh. myself simultaneously feeling this minty finish. I like it. But also a dry tongue. This is a unique bourbon, definitely. Yeah, I don't know that I've ever tasted even a craft bourbon like this. But I'm saying this in a way that 
It's complimentary. Mm. I like the unique flavors that are coming off of this. It's not so far beyond the pale, so weird, so foreign that it doesn't feel like a whiskey. This feels like we're in whiskey territory, but I'm getting some notes out of this that feel rare to, to, to whiskey. There's this metallic finish that reminds me of staining furniture. I'm gonna say, if a honey put it in a blender mm -hmm. with walnuts and black tea, and then, okay. and then whatever came out of this blender of walnuts, black tea, and honey, mm -hmm. then that's an element in here, that's a flavor in here. The combination of those three things. Okay, let's move to the rye. really nicely. I, I actually really like that. Oh, so the rye has, uh, oh man, the rye is straight up uh, books and a used bookshop. <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't even say used bookshop. I'm getting like fresh books. Yeah, like open the binding and smell the oh, paper and the, the glue I'm, and the book glue. I'm in my junior high library. Yeah. 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 That's bizarre. A very unique take on a category. This is only 10 months old. No. Yeah. No. Can you believe that? No. Man, studio. So uh, great job on the logos. So oh, the, the five, labels. Five gallon barrels. Five gallon barrels. The small barrels. That's where the woodiness and the dryness is coming from. Yeah. And they, so we dumped. They couldn't use used barrels. This is bourbon. This new oak. So okay. we dumped some uh, two year old MGP bourbon into five gallon barrels, right. and it only took four months for them to get so astringently. So Woody. it seems like they are going after very well-established categories, but what they are delivering is a very unique take on those categories that I'm really enjoying. This, Go into a bookshop. This feels like unicorn. I'm gonna take a sip. This feels like unicorn bottlings in each of these respective categories. Go into a bookshop while yeah. holding a vanilla candle. Oh, the taste is wow. subtle and mild. It almost went dark chocolate. Dark chocolate, some peanut, and maybe not dark chocolate though. It is chocolate. No, dark chocolate, some peanut, and also, dude, peanut, almost a peanut butter. You know what I know? You know what I just popped into my head is espresso, the bitterness <sighs> of an espresso covered coffee bean. Okay, so. Dark chocolate, espresso, coffee bean. Okay, so, but like I got a buddy uh, who is, he, everything he gets into, he nerds out hardcore. Micro brews. Grounds his own coffee, coffee yeah, yeah. does like the Chemex, and he takes like waits the perfect amount of time to get down to the half a degree. Grams things yeah, out, every, yeah. And, and I was staying at his river house uh, a couple years back, and he did this coffee, and I'm, ta I'm tasting this thing. I was like, God, just give me the coffee, cold, right? Mm. Just put a little K cup in there. I want to get some freaking caffeine in me. <laughs> then he did the whole you know ceremonial thing with the. And he poured me this thing. I'll be damned if it wasn't the best coffee I ever had. Yeah, see, it was there's phenomenal. And the patience coffee, matters. The coffee had this really rich, nutty note mm -hmm. that I had never had in coffee before. But supposedly with the right beans, ground the right way, with yep. the right temperature. Probably a Colombian roast. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I usually find that note in Colombian roast. Between these two, what do you like? Better. I'm going to go so off script. The rye. I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not a rye guy, but that rye. Hmm. Is espresso, it's a chocolate covered espresso Let's be very beans. clear. These are both unicorn offerings mm -hmm. in bourbon and rye. This is unique and special. And they're doing their own thing. Man, you know what it is? That the, the, the flavor that I adore, that I found in Westland and in Deerhammer. Yeah, the coffee. You, you often, often call it coffee. I often call it a really rich, saturated nuttiness. Mm -hmm. That shows up in spades, in spades in that rye. I love that. Okay, we get two more bottles, dude. Are we in Ireland yet? No, but I love this bottle. It doesn't have an easy tear away thing. Yeah. I freaking love it. Mm. <laughs> so, literally, you magnificent bastards. Fight. And this is Indiana whiskey from the Heartland Distillers. Oh. That we don't really know whether they've made it or not. It smells like they... I just wanted to see what the... Wow, that's really cool. So the, the obvious leap is oh, Indiana whiskey is gonna be MGP. But I'm not getting immediately MGP on the nose. Yeah, we don't actually know if they made it or not, because all it says is produced by. No. We, don't, we do know it's at least two years. Okay, but I'm saying though, on the nose, you're not getting MGP. No, it does not smell like MGP. Right. This is twice barreled, so they took it out of a barrel after two years and put it back into another new charred barrel. It does smell very nice, light, fruity. 
This is pure melon. Mm, yeah. The most melon-heavy bourbon I've ever smelled. Yeah, melons. I love the melons on this. A really nice, light, sweet, fruity nose. Melon is a good note. On the taste, though, that honeydew melon does show up in spades. Beautifully light and sweet and fruity. It's melon and sweet tea for me. And the taste? Yeah. I haven't gotten a taste yet. Yeah. It's melon and the sweet tea. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. There's something else though. There's a tinge, a little curl of almost, almost molasses, but it's not dense. It's light. Like a watered tea. down. Yeah, it's watered down. That's what but I'm it's, saying. That's but there's saying a little J hook of something. A little. It goes like this. It goes yeah. Like, like that. That's the move of the whiskey. We should do interpretive dances for these whiskeys. We don't even give. We don't verbalize the notes. We just move in the way that the notes present. This is very pretty, but it's... It would be funny if we were interpretive dancing and then I accidentally hit you, and then you accidentally hit me. And it turned into a fight. Yeah. <laughs> I was watching an old video of ours, and my favorite line that you've had in the last year was these two... Uh, it's not store... What are the... It's the two flamingos. Weirdest slap fight ever. Because <laughs> the long legs. And I... I started laughing even at my desk, picturing the slap fight of this really awkward slap fight of <laughs> flamingos. I don't remember that at all. It was. Mm. I can't so, remember. Which and now I'm getting some type of a like a candy sweetness on the taste after I go back. Yeah, it there's more sweet. There's a weird note to this that I it's peppermint. It's peppermint. That's what it is for the life of me, and it's not just any peppermint. It's those candy uh, peppermint. Um, the one that looks like a cylinder. No, the ones that went, they're like multicolored at Christmas, and they don't taste just like peppermint. They also have a slight cherry note to them. Right. Have you ever seen them? So when you're getting uh, candy canes to hang on the tree, oh. you get normal peppermint, or you get the one that has green and blue and all the colors in it. Sure. And that one has this slight cherry note to it, and it's much better than normal peppermint. Is that the last one? No, there's one more. Okay. Now this is also from uh, Jack and Harder, and he says, Senior Harder, you magnificent, magnificent bastard. Fight. And he says on his note, hey, this one has additional aging because motorcycle rides contribute to flavor, right? <laughs> Thankfully, no deer crashes. Oh, oh. all right. So he, uh, you got a little motorcycle, like little trip there. Yeah. All right, right on. This is Sycamore, Ohio, straight bourbon. Oh. And no matter how much I looked, I couldn't find any information about this oh. except for super generic information. Ohio. Like, if you go look about us, mm -hmm. it starts with in 1794. Oh. It's like, that's not an about us. I wonder if they say it's the taste of heritage. Oh, yes. Let's see. A veteran started this community. He had he built a whole town and one of Cincinnati's first distilleries. Today, right. we produce whiskeys uh, not very far from that guy. <laughs> that's literally what it says. There's this really famous guy who built a whole town. And today, we make whiskey like not very far from that. Uh, it's that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me want to advertise ourselves after the Barsanadam Hindu temple. Right. What's like in Austin. It's an Indian It's whiskey. one of the most world-renowned Hindu temples in all of Texas. Yeah, you can see it from here. And we make whiskey only next door to those guys. It's just pure uh, burnt sugar. Vanilla, and then I'm going in. It's kind of light on the nose. Yeah, it's, it is very light on the nose. What is it? 45. It's nice and easy, man. There's nothing weird or funky. You get mm, it's thin. It's a little, but it's a little brown sugar as typical. So it's nice and easy. You got the brown sugar and you got the honey. I'm not getting a dominant apple or cherry, which I very often find of these. If someone poured, we keep hitting bourbons these days. Where I think if I was at a restaurant or at yeah. a bar with friends and someone said, "Here, I, I got you a drink," mm -hmm. I would drink this with no complaints. Sure, but I wouldn't crave it. Right. Like I wouldn't go seeking it out or trying to track it down. Right. I would just think, yeah, that's fine. Sure. So it's like most things in life, if you want to grab attention and get some momentum, there has to be an element to whatever it is, whatever product, whatever service, whatever personality. Surprise? That's a little bit uh, outlandish, unexpected, a little bit it's gonna be a bit much for some people. One of my favorite things it that Roy, will put some people off. One of my favorite things that Roy says right. at the school is 
surprise is the beginning of delight. Yeah. It's the heart of delight. Mm-hmm. To be delighted by something, you have to be surprised by it. Yeah, if you this see it is, coming. This is not surprising. It's well done and it's perfectly nice. Yes, but it's not surprising. It's not surprising. It's not bad. I'm saying if I were going to design a whiskey that's going to be eminently drinkable, and I saw what you did. I'm not commenting. Eminently drinkable, you Patterson wannabe. You kept it all on the carpet. You Patterson wannabe. <laughs> eminently drinkable and nice. That just checks the boxes of what a big number of people in the mass market want out of a whiskey. It's gonna be like the nice sweetness. Got some honey. Uh, you got some a uh, little bit of like a little bit of sweet tea. I'm not getting a big cherry. I'm not getting a big floral. I'm not getting a big oak. I'm not getting a big apple. Uh, a nice, sweet, reasonably good whiskey there. Tastes a little thin. All right. Here's the funny stealing and drinking. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may you drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the whiskey vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.